Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of the Defer Podcast. Today we're going to talk about Maslow's hierarchy of needs in relation to the border relations between Nepal and India, in relation to the freedom of speech issue going on, in relation to uh, Dr. Govinda Keshi's, uh, I think it's a hunger strike, yeah, uh, Dr. Govinda Keshi's hunger strike, and the different things that are going on in the startup sector in Nepal. So that's what's awaiting for you in this podcast. Let's, let's start up with a border issue with Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So let me just go in quick summary of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. There's like five pyramids. The first is the physiological needs, which are food, water, shelter, and clothing. Um, you can get your salary for this in the modern terms. You can say that. Then there's the security needs, like your personal security, how much money you have in the bank, your pension, your health care, your uh, self-well-being, all of that in the long term. Then there's the belonging needs. These are much more emotional. They're work, friends, positive setting. Then there's the self-esteem thing, like your pride, your respect, your status. Then there comes the self-actualization need, right? Um, in relation to the border relation. Now, I'm not going to address like uh, the whole issue about, oh, we had this in the map and they removed it and they added in the map. And then the whole in, in Nepal's insignia, the map is wrong and the area that is supposed to be in Nepal's side is missing in the insignia itself. That's a big blunder on the management and the bureaucracy side. If the government is not going to act up on its uh, on its actions and they're not going to do their job well, these are the things that are going to happen. These are the problems you're going to face. Of course, I blame the government in this. They're in action in making sure our borders are correctly uh, secured. They're in action in making sure that uh, we are not, uh, we are a sovereign nation is a big blunder. And I blame them for that. There's no hiding. I'm, I'm, I'm in support of all these entrepreneurial things that the government is doing right now. But this is the big blunder on their side. But if you look at it from the Maslow's hierarchy perspective, uh, what is Nepal society on right now? Which like layer which tranche of the pyramid is Nepal society on and then I look at it and I, the first thing I see is Nepal's right now is between the security needs and physiological needs right like the whole belonging thing and the self-esteem thing and the self-actualization thing these three things are like the three things that we get after we made sure that we are set for these two needs but then if you look at most of the people in Nepal these two needs are not sure. That's where Dr. Govinda Casey's like whole uh, hunger strike uh, relates to. He's trying to make sure everybody has better health care. Everybody has access to better health care through better doctors. How are better doctors going to get there? Through better medical schools. How are you going to get better medical schools if you have low uh, cost of education for these medical schools? Because if you look at how you uh, unravel this whole medical healthcare issue, you go to a hospital, they're not going to charge you X amount of dollars or X amount of rupees for uh, some medicine because it's that hard to manufacture. Penicillin was invented in the like 20th century. It's not that hard to manufacture. It's like the pattern had expired. Even if I had the expertise, I could open up a factory and do that. There's a lot of people doing that already. But why it's expensive is because of the fact that it takes a lot of money for these doctors to be become doctors. Like the amount of fee they pay to these medical institutions is so high that they would have to adjust all this post-education in your pills. When you have high medical cost pills, what it's going to do is it's going to strain the consumer. When it strains the consumer, what it's going to do is strain the government economy. The circular economy stops right there. Stop at the gateway of these medical professionals. What are they going to do? The people in these hospitals, they're going to invest in real estate. They're going to freeze up all this money. This land money gets freezed up. And then they're going to make the prices of land go way extremely high. And then it's going to create that uh, classism that difference between the classes. These people were ultra rich and then there's people who can't even afford healthcare. So Dr. Govinda Casey is fighting that. So I think at this point of time, that's my personal opinion, looking at, uh, looking from the lens, looking at it from a point of view, looking from the lens 
of a Gen Z is we do need to make sure that healthcare needs to be addressed in this country because even if we look at um, the US, healthcare is a big issue there. Uh, if you look at uh, India, healthcare is a big issue there because uh, this uh, actor Amir Khan did this whole Satamaya Jayate episodes on a bunch of like bad things going on in the healthcare industry in India like so many times and these abortion issues and these uh, lack of infrastructure and in, like rural villages everything and Nepal goes through that a lot and I think uh, what Dr. Casey is trying to do is really commendable but the way he's going at it is like I think I can't 100% agree with him because if you go on a hunger strike that you think is never going to be broken there's only two way out of it one way the other party caves in and uh, agrees to your demands the other way is I don't want to talk about that that's a really bleak future and if you're going to do that 17 or 18 times you're kind of going to lose credibility and with some parts of the uh, population uh, Dr. Casey might it seems through conversation I've had with people they're allowed to have these opinions just like I'm allowed to express those opinions through these podcasts through freedom of speech we're going to get to it and Within, right after this in a moment yeah the, the, he's losing some sort of credibility i wish it wasn't so i wish it wasn't the same thing as a, a like a flavor of the month kind of a thing but it is it has become some sort of that and uh, it, it having to uh, like his hunger strike having had to uh, like his hunger strike uh, has coincided with this whole border thing and that's sort of made both issues like go against each other and that's not what we want you know we want both issues to be addressed with a nuance effectively and we want to solve these issues with uh utmost care because if you uh, now it goes to the economics this border issue if you annoy uh the indian government and if the diplomacy goes wrong what are we gonna do we're gonna have the second blockade in like less than five years and that's not going to be good for our economy because next year is visit about 2020 and we need to make sure everything goes right for that because that's the point where we have to show everyone that yeah we bounced back five years after the earthquake and we're still we, we, we're in the right track we have a double digit we're going to have a double, double digit growth in our economy we're going to have better health care we're going to have better uh, security for our uh, citizens and that's what we need now going on to the Vitain thing, then they, whenever you talk about security, okay, whenever you talk about having security, then there comes the issue of liberty, right? If you're if you're trying to protect your loved ones from, let's say, a firecracker, what do you do? You're gonna ban the firecracker in your home. What happens when that child or your family member goes outside your house? You can't protect that person everywhere. Same thing with Vitain's issue and Durgis Taba's issue. Like there's not a lot of uh, like countries out there that are, that are banning the outright the issue of cannabis even us would which started this whole banning cannabis thing in the 70s is legalizing it in their different states out there they're making money off that thing they're trying to they're trying to make it a commercial entity they're trying to make it into a cash crop and here we are being regressive we were progressive back in the day according to one of my friends who recently came back from uk we were really progressive and then because of the US we became regressive but now US has become progressive with like the sides have switched and the government tried to stop Bitain from his song and then trying to put him in jail or trying to get him into custody for uh, his song he has a freedom of speech and because of that he's allowed to say whatever he wants now it's upon the child father mother to stop the child like it's the child's uh, father mother sorry it's the child's uh, right to go and watch whatever the child wants but it's the parents like responsibility to make sure the child goes in the right path like if you give me youtube i can go whatever i can go look at whatever i want but then the government is not my father and mother my father and mother are my father and mother the government has no right to tell me what to do that's the whole thing i have the right to say whatever i want i have the right to say uh, right to do whatever I want 
without harming another individual. Vitain has not harmed any other individual. He's just speaking things. He's just speaking things about what he does in his lifestyle. And every uh, man, woman or child is allowed to speak about what they do in their lifestyle. That's the essential need about, that's in the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know. It's about self-esteem. It's about status and pride. This false sense of pride and status about how we're trying to preserve our culture uh, to whatever logic the government was trying to pull is is not where we are at honestly we, we're not even at like the belonging needs thing you know we're we're not even part of our like something like everybody is like dispersed out there politically socially economically and every one of them is thinking about how i can screw over this other person and then at the same time we have government inform enforcing x y and z doing all of this thing that sort of gives me the idea that if you come into nepal and then you go through this whole visit nepal 2020 thing and then they're trying to make us seem out to be like this wonderful paradise but then if you're not allowed to speak in paradise is it really paradise you know they had this whole slogan like uh heaven is a myth nepal is real like yeah like persecution according to political beliefs is also real and that might happen this is simply so from like getting a singer to go into jail like that's what like hitler did you know now i know the whole age old thing about the debate like whoever quotes hitler first loses but you know like oppressive regimes have that kind of ability and i don't think our current government is an oppressive regime i just think that they've lost a way in that like they, they lost a step in the way in that uh, if I have to rephrase myself. Now, there's other thing uh, about self-actualization and self-esteem and belonging needs that we like. We, we need to address this in the 10 or 20 years. It doesn't mean that you're wrong to address that right now, but then we have to make sure the physiological needs and security needs are met properly. There's a lot of people that don't have access to good water, right? Um, and we're talking about things that are beyond comprehension of the people who care about having like a one decent meal every day like one decent meal i'm not even talking about two or three like they want to have one decent meal i've seen people sleep at times like in these desperate situation like noodles and that's not the most nutritious food out there and if you look at nepal's constitution it enforces it allows it gives you the right to have uh, like right to nutritious food go read it and Paul's constitution allows you to have this right of nutritious food and good health care now there's no country out in the world that ensures these kind of issues and these kinds of uh, you know rights and Nepal's progressive in that but only on text it's not progressive on like actions <clears throat> now moving on to something like that's uh, that has happened really recently it's 13th uh, November today and we recently celebrated this 11-11 sale going on on, on Daraj and I think Daraj is part of Alibaba's this global conglomerate thing and there's been very uh, there's been a lot of issues of people complaining uh, about the lack of the lack of honor and like you know the lack of what's my call the people were lying outright like the sellers were lying outright what their products they were peddling uh, i saw like this whole uh, on sale a hundred rupees uh recharge card for hundred rupees like what the hell man i don't want to see that and then they you know you when i was in the us i heard this wild stories about people ordering from china and then like they're getting these knock off things if you're on if you uh, knock off things of so many things if you're ordering nikes you get pikes you know all of that stuff that was what was happening in like the daraj sale i don't mean to like say daraj is bad or anything they're really good for economy they're making sure that the online uh community the online selling community has like a decent uh you know uh flow right now they're making sure that uh, there's a lot of awareness but uh, yeah that happened you can't you can't put it on me and say that's slander that that basically happened people have been posting about that 
they told me that it was a failure last year but then turns out it's a failure this year too and the government is looking into actions for that and thank god there's consumer protection action finally there's poor consumer protection right but finally some like government's doing something well on that matter and that also brings you to the idea of security needs and physiological needs you know um, we're setting up system and it's very hard to set up a system in a country who's gone through a lot of dramatic political changes in the span of 20 years. We we lost the king and then we ousted the king, like the uh, king, and then we had uh, a republic and then we went into federalism. It was a short period of time. It happened in my lifetime. Like, and I'm only 24, right? I'm turning 25 next year. So it happened. I saw through all of that. Imagine this, me being a kid and I saw, saw through all of this. I remember going, you know, school assembly and then learning about the kings and like and singing the national song and then in a matter of years the national song changed uh, i have no issues with that like uh, like the elders decided whatever they wanted to do they did it but you know like i've seen through that so it was a monumental change in history but being that you know being a kid at that time was like really interesting because uh, i have this perspective of um of a person who's gone through so many changes in the in their life that i can now literally say yeah bring it on you know i've gone through so much stuff that um people like me too people from my generation basically have gone through so have gone through so much stuff that we can say ah, basically bring on whatever uh, like i wasn't even here for the earthquake and the blockade and people survived through that Hell, Nepalese people are really resilient. So, you know, uh, props to that. But now, go, coming from all of that, my point, uh, putting my point, um, putting my point across, security needs and physiological needs. That's uh, what we need to focus right now. And now, going into um, the whole um, uh, security needs, the government has made some strides with like the social security uh issues like they're they're trying to make a better tax code which is really great for the country because if you have a better tax code if you have everybody paying taxes everybody has this pan number everybody can uh register what businesses they are doing they can pay tax they can at least question the government how much money they are spending and where they're spending because that was not possible uh in the yesteryears now they can say okay we 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 want to solve these issues and like you know why are you not addressing these issues and in that same vein we had this uh uh we had this meme going and like circulating around in our uh uh facebook pages and social media about this dude who's uh who's supposed to uh, he's a, so this dude is uh is a contractor road contractor that that was supposed to uh pitch the road between Kamal Binak and Nagarkot, that's in the Kathmandu Valley, right around uh, Bhaktapur. And uh, they put a monkey and they put his face on a bus in different stalls and say, like, piss this road or we're gonna do some action. And this was like, oh my God, that was funny. And this has been circulating around. These are the kind of needs we need to talk about. And I think people are doing the right thing with that. Whenever I see this kind of thing, these kind of things, like I'm like, damn, they got him, got him. That kind of, uh, uh, that kind of attitude is what I really like, and that's my personal opinion. But whatever. Um, and going back to what like Maslow, Sahaya give needs. Yeah, this is in the security thing. Like you know, uh, you need to have better, you know, roads. You need to have better uh infrastructure because in the long run that's going to affect how uh, how fast your healthcare is supposed to be provided how fast the development goes in other aspects of the country and, and that leads to better security let's uh, let's imagine we had a like a really bad like uh biological outbreak like like a dengue fever or thing and it was supposed to be like if you go to a higher elevation they're not like the mosquito is not gonna bite and people are flogging in to go into Nogal Court and like escape through there. How are people gonna go if this uh, motherfucker doesn't uh, pitch the road over there, okay? Like it's going to like have this whole like a congested thing and 
there's going to be a lot of traffic jam. People are not going to be able to evacuate themselves really quickly. So I think that person should be like penalized with a civil crime. That's that's what my personal opinion is. Like if you listen to engineers, they're gonna go to the, like the logical extent of any argument. So don't listen to me when I say, um, you know, persecute this person with like civil like lawsuits. But you know, just like take action. Like if it takes seven years for this motherfucker to complete this uh, road, what the fuck are we doing? Like this, like why aren't people slapping his face like every time? they see him. That's, that's what I think. Yeah, I'm not promoting that behavior at I'm just saying, hypothetically, if somebody slapped this person, hypothetically, I'm still, I'll, this is all hypothetical. And yeah, according to the wording of this, at the end of this show, this is all fictional. Yeah, cheeky nandos. Uh, people in UK are gonna get that joke, but anyways. Um, <coughs> this person needs to be slapped. That's in a hypothetical scenario. If somebody says that and goes out and does it, I would understand, man. I would understand, but you know, don't slap this dude. I'm just saying, I would understand if you did, but just saying, don't slap this dude. Repeating itself. Like if this person decides to sue me, I'm just saying, outright. It was all hypothetical. I'm just saying, if, if somebody slaps this dude, I would understand. Uh, and moving on, like, I don't want to go into this whole slapping thing because, like, by poor violence, I, I was born in, like, uh, Rupandahi, which is really close to the birthplace of Buddha. And going back to that thing, why is everybody obsessed with the fact that Buddha was born in Nepal? Like, I mean, really? Like, do, do you have to yell it out every time, like, you see an Indian post on, like, Reddit, like, Nepal thread, like, why? Like, I understand, like, the whole sentiment about them trying to build, like, a fake Lumini over there on the other side of the border, but then, why? Like, I can't even fathom this whole thing about having this hatred for this one country, and this whole thing has escalated because of this border thing. Like, like if I go to, like, U US, right? Like, imagine, I go to the US and everybody calls me a terrorist just for having a beard. How bad do you think I feel, right? 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 You go to the U.S. and somebody treats you discriminately for having done nothing wrong. Having done nothing wrong just because of the color of your skin or just because you're from a different part of the world. You can treat them differently, not knowing what their whole life story has been. And then you act like that. How do you feel? Yeah, think about think about it like that. That's how you need to think when you like talk to your neighbor. Of course, they're going to have like... if. That person turns out to be a prime minister of India. One day, they, of course, they're going to treat us bad because you, you've you been treating that person bad. You need to criticize the government itself. You don't need to criticize the people. That's how I understand. If if the people, if the whole logic is, yeah, people voted the government and that's why the, that's the resentment, that's the sentiment of, uh, that's the resentment of those people towards us and the, that's the sentiment of those people towards uh, uh, Nepal. I mean, uh, how many times have you elected like assholes and idiots in our country, right? Right? Half of those people in my country right now think they've elected idiots. I'm not saying we have, just saying half those people that I talk to think they've elected idiots. You know, obviously they are wrong, you know, like, you know, everybody is an idiot if you look at it from like somebody's perspective, like, I'm an idiot, according to someone, to one of the people listening to this podcast. But, but then again, you know, don't don't mix up the whole idea. People represent their government. It's the government that represents the people. And go moving on. This whole thing. Uh, there's this whole thing about. Uh, it was announced today by the uh, sports ministry and I think tourism ministry about having like a e go kart. I don't think it's a go-kart race, e-rally race in Mustang. Uh, it's an electric car rally race. It was really great. Uh, that's a really great step. It needs to be taken. Sports uh, uh, tourism needs to be promoted. Skiing, go-karting, bungee jumping, 
I even said have an X Games in Nepal. I know that's not going to be possible, but I want those hippie people here, baby. I want them to like influence all the good thing about cannabis industry in Nepal. And let's go into that. The hierarchy of needs. This is, when I talk about cannabis in Nepal, this is where like the hierarchy of needs sort of merges with all the things, okay? So there's people with cancer, there's people with glaucoma, there's people with autism, there's people with so many other ailments that could be solved by using CBD oil, right? So it sort of solves the whole idea of security needs. You have better healthcare, you want, you better well make money off of these plants and then invest in the healthcare. But then because in the 1970s and the 60s, the U.S. expansion of their globalist policy uh, and how they influenced Nepal's government. We were really progressive back then. Now we're really regressive. But then they like outsmarted everyone in the world. They've they swindled everybody's money. They captured all these like biological plants and patented in them, and then refined these uh, seeds. To making better product for themselves and they're legalizing in their country so they're basically stealing from the resources that are available in our country and here you are thinking like oh yeah we're trying to like suck up to our like uh western masters over here and that's not true okay uh that's not how it goes and if any if any of you who's listening to this podcast and wants to run for office in nepal you really think like people are like me are going to vote for you no Every day I fight against people like you who go against um, like the thought process I go. And you know, our numbers are increasing. You know, every time you, you're trying to stop these people, trying to uh, pro- propagate this uh, culture in Nepal, there's people, if you're trying to stop someone from doing it, they're gonna do it anyways. If you're trying to make people aware, if we take the route of Portugal where they legalize all these drugs and then they're trying to rehabilitate all these people, that's where the drug users dropped, okay? And that's what we need to do. We need to understand what the issue is. The issue is not the fact that people are using these drugs. The issue is that people don't have any resources to make money. And because it's agriculture, it's a cash crop in like most countries, we need to take uh, progressive steps to make sure that these issues are handled. We even have a CA assembly member from the ruling party talk about this issue. People are spending millions from Nepal, millions of dollars from Nepal, in dollars from Nepal, going into other countries and making sure that their cancers are treated, right? So if you have all that thing going on in Nepal, I think you should legalize it. But then that's just my opinion. And just like everybody, I have an ass and I have an opinion. You don't have to see any of it. Uh, now, moving on to the issue about, uh, I talked about earlier, Nepal does have this, uh, Nepal is going to do this uh, uh, electric off-road uh, racing series uh, in 2021. And uh, it's just going to be above 2,750 meters above sea level. And, um, it is going to be one of the biggest spectacle uh, spectacles in the world. Uh, sorry for my pronunciation. I'm not a native English speaker, so I think it's going to be a uh, uh, a good thing uh, for Nepal because uh, it's a great place for uh, uh, it's a great place for uh, having these sports because that arena is so good and like electric cars are the way of the future and if you have these events if you have these kind of things you invite people from like the highest uh like you invite people with deep pockets let's say and when you have people with deep pockets they spend a lot that jump starts the economy and if you if you're really thinking uh mustang then that's great because that place is empty as hell like you could fit a lot of people in there it's really scenic and beautiful and i wouldn't mind having a car race over there you know i'd like to go and uh, like enjoy that event myself and uh, i like to be involved in it i don't know how i want to be but i like to be involved in it and i don't know i'll try to make sure like if i uh, find any more news about this i'll go and find out and then if, see if 
how engineers can be uh, involved in this because this is a really great uh, opportunity and I also like to plug in Yadri Motorcycles. They're this great company, they're this great startup starting in Nepal and they're, they're trying to build their own flagship uh, motorbike, electric motorbike in Nepal and I wish nothing but good luck to them. And if any of them are listening to this podcast, I really think you should uh, go on and partic- try to get like a, a bike ride, you know, uh, electric bike race over there because they make like this um track for a car i think it would be a great track for a bike too with just some modifications so i don't know it's going to be in 2021 and and 2021 is two years from now and we could see a lot of things happening in two years from now uh regarding uh the major issue of this uh, uh week it's nepal has uh, launched this distro framework okay this is like a significant shift of uh entrepreneur uh, significant shift for entre- for entrepreneurship in nepal and i'd like to address for a lot uh the word for i like to highlight it because they have 80 different resolutions 80 different uh areas sub uh, they have eight different major major areas and 80 different areas they're trying to tackle i talked a lot about this in my nepali podcast the other day and in uh, i wrote a blog post on it the links for both are given below and because of this i really like to see if you have 80 different sub areas you can have so many startups in like addressing all those problems and because it's digital it's very easy to set up solutions compared to hardware solutions and i as a mechanical engineer understand how hard it is to have a um uh hardware solution manufacturers it's very hard to have like a uh, minimum viable product if you have a hardware solution and if you have to go through all of this and you, you don't have a lot of tools but then if you have a software engineer like you can have an mvp and you can have it running on a private network in a matter of months or weeks depending on your skill level so basically go read that and if you're a software engineer who's trying trying so hard to solve the nepal's problems you know you find a little bit of uh that over there uh and this week uh, uh, these are the issues i'll be uh, i've addressed and if you if you think i missed out on some issues just comment down below if you think i'm an asshole comment down below and if you think i i should have some uh, mental health courses and like go talk to a, a therapist i mean this is the uh therapy i'm getting this podcast is my therapy okay um yeah, and keep on fighting the fight, you know, uh, drink a lot of water and go to the gym, you know, it's never too late to go to the gym and improve your life because every day you're trying to improve your life, it improves your perspective in the world and makes you better, opt- uh, it makes you a better person, makes you optimist, that's what I was trying to say and then I jumbled my words. Anyways, uh, that's the end, goodbye.